and Janet and John and Kathy and Mark. And very often we were only uh, provided with images, images of um, children doing things, families doing things. And we had to create that story. We had to decide what was happening. We had to describe what was happening as young children. And that is how our literacy skills developed. We didn't need to look at artworks hanging in a gallery or anything like that. We just needed to engage with what we were, what, what, what was in front of us. And that is how language started for us as children and for at young adults. So we looked at these images and we, we, would, we would be prompted by the teacher to describe what was happening in these pictures. We would be prompted to say what the child was wearing or what the father was wearing or what they were doing. And in that way, we would start developing our visual skills to be able to look deeper and deeper into an image, to be able to understand what was going on. And we could even be, we were even able to tell a story as to when or how it happened and then how it progressed and what happened thereafter. This is all how vision literacy starts when it comes to artworks. Can I have the next slide, please? Okay, so in the next slide, I, I, I explain that we need to choose narratives. When we are standing in the classroom, we choose narratives, narrative art, which is which tells a story. And not all arts will tell a sort of like the basic story or an absolute um, in-your-face kind of story. It doesn't always do that because we have abstract art. We have non-representational art. We have all these different types of art forms or art movements that are addressed. But very often when we need to teach children about the literacy aspect or reading art or feel comfortable with that, we need to engage them with artworks that actually have a story behind it. So um, uh, my points there say that when teaching visual literacy, choose artworks um, or images that have a narrative, that have a story in other words. Children need to feel um, less intimidated by reading and understanding artworks. And, and that is why we choose the, the fun things. And sometimes it's not even an artwork. It's just an ordinary picture from a picture book. Um, so visual literacy is, is, um, um, is learning how to talk about artwork, um, what, what to look for, understanding what we see and give our interpretations of our findings. Very often when you're in a classroom, you have to tell children also, remember, no answer is wrong. So it's what you see. When you go into a gallery, what I always tell my child, my students is when you go into a gallery, we could be five people walking into a gallery and each of us will have a different interpretation or a different view or an opinion about an artwork. Some might not like it, some might like, like the artwork very much. You might talk about things, some might notice things in an artwork that the others don't see. So it is, it is very much about a, a subjective kind of view of what, you, what you're seeing and how you share that. And then what teachers need to do is to prompt children to say more and more about the artwork. So I often stand in my classroom and I say to the children, I have a cup of coffee in my hand. And then I will say to them, what do I have in my hand? And they will say coffee. And I say, what is in the cup? Then they'll say coffee. So I said, well, it can't just be coffee. I've clearly added many other things to this cup of coffee for it to be coffee for me to drink. So then I'd ask them for four marks, what do I, what describe the coffee that's in my cup? And they would then say, oh, there's water, there's sugar, there's milk, and there's the coffee granules. So therefore, it would be the four things. So they need to delve deeper and deeper into understanding and knowing what they are looking at and not just say there are people in the picture. They need to say how old they are or, or the ages or are they young or are they old? Um, how many? Are they male or female? And that tells you a little bit more. What are they wearing? They, it tells you more and more. And this is how you, you expand the literacy aspect of, um, of visual art. And um, so always integrating into your discussion in the classroom also you know, your various elements of art, your line. And, you know that the artist uses a little bit of color. They don't you think this color stands out? The color is really quite bright. Um, or ask them, why is it that, that this figure is standing out? They will say, oh, because they're wearing a bright red dress. So it is about understanding um, just how simply we can actually, uh, you know, sort of start delving into elements of art, principles of art, and, and all kinds of visual literacy language that can be used and expanded on. Okay, can I have the next slide, please? Can I have the next slide, please? Thank you. 
Okay, so I'll, I've done a little, just a little, a, a short one. I'm not sure how much time I have left. Hopefully, I, I, I get through it all. Um, but this is a, 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 just how simply I've taken an image um, off the internet, and I hope I see it's got copyright at the bottom. I hope I'm not going to get into trouble. But it's a, just an image off the internet from a, a picture book or a story book. Um, and subject matter, these are the things that we look at. When we speak to children about subject matter, we, we need to break it down. So often we need to use those art terms subject matter, which is actually content. Um, but at the same time, we need to say to them, they will look at you and say, oh, what is that, ma'am? Um, I don't understand. No, it's what you see. So exactly how I explained about the coffee cup um, and the coffee in my, in my mug. It's about what you see. Break it down even further. So what I've done is I've done just a really brief one um, on the screen. You'll see that it says, um, in the picture, what do you see? Right. So I've got trees. How many trees are there? So so you need to look at it and then maybe just give an idea. Maybe I see six. Maybe some people see eight. Some people will see more than others. Um, foxes. How many foxes do I see? Oh, I see one, two, three, four. And the children count. So there's numeracy being brought into it as well. So they get to count. They get to understand and look and they look deeper. And some might see the others, the one behind the tree and some might not see the one hiding behind the tree. So we need to delve a little bit deeper and deeper. Then we need to relate to them also about the colors. So we also see um, the blue blossoms on the on the branches or the blue leaves. I, I'm not quite sure what they are, if they're leaves or blossoms, because it is a night scene. So we need to also highlight that it is at night and that you see the moon in the background, right in the center. You can ask them, you can prompt them, is it night or day? Um, and then what tells you that it's night or day? So that they start really unpacking the information that they find in the visuals within the artwork. And then they can also talk about the little squirrel. So it's going into more and more um, detail that they can find. So they really have to look deeper and deeper. So you see the squirrel on the left-hand side and you see the little bird's nest on the right-hand branch. So it's, it's very, that they start unpacking a little bit more each time. And it's quite exciting for them to find because they get very excited about it. And as they get older, it will become a little bit easier. They do get lazier, but it does become a little bit easier for them to actually look for more um, parts of the, of the artwork. Can I please have the next slide? Okay, so in this one here, we talk about context. Now, earlier we spoke about subject matter and content, which is what you see. But context is about, and mood, is about what you think is happening in the picture. And so, and what do you, how does it make you feel? So if you look at the very same picture, we are now able to talk about what it is that we see happening in the picture. So a story can be told. So the children will say, oh, it's happening at night. Um, I see five foxes. The one is possibly a mommy and a daddy. And then we have three little babies. One is, two of them are playing in the center of the picture. And the one is tugging at the other one's tail. And, and we have one little um, um, fox in the front, which is possibly the daddy or the mommy trying to take care of it, trying to make sure it doesn't wander off. So all of this, or you could say that they are wandering or they're about to get ready to go and sleep at night. Um, so there's a story that is being told. So context doesn't have to be a daunting word. It doesn't have to be a word that you shy away from. Context is basically the story of the picture. It is what is happening, and that is how we need to explain it to the children in any artwork. And I'll explain that a little bit later when we see some of the other slides. And I want to go through this quickly so we can, I don't run out of time. Um, so we can have the next slide, please. Can I have the next slide, please? Thank you. Okay, so here I've just, oh, that's a strange little um, um, emblem in the, in, the, in the picture there. But anyway, um, I'm just, uh, it's covering up my, my um, title now, but anyway, the language of art. These are the terms that one uses when, um, when you are discussing artworks or when you are creating artworks. So um, the elements and the principles of art are the, are the foundation of um, our, our art, our visual literacy, it's the foundation of creating art. When, I, and I often do this in class, I say to the children, um, I'm drawing a picture. So what do we start out with? And then they will, very often will take a bit of prompting, but they will say, we start with a line. I say, yes, and then the line encloses, and then I draw a shape. And then I show them, oh, if I add a little bit of color to this, or I added just a little bit of 
dark and light areas to it, I create, I, I'm using tone and I create a three dimensional form. And then I add, to make my picture more exciting, I add color and I can add some textures and I can make it smooth and rough and bumpy and spark, spiky and all of that. And then I can add more objects and overlap them and put them behind each other and create the idea of space. And just in doing a simple demonstration of drawing on a white sheet of paper using crayon, black crayon on white paper or, or vice versa, um, I have gone through all seven elements of art in a matter of five minutes, just a quick little line drawing that you can show, show and display to your children while teaching them. So these are just the basics, the basic languages that we would use in art. Can I have the next slide, please? Can I have the next slide? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Perfect. So, so earlier on, I mentioned that, you know, we look at more artwork. So earlier we looked at like a picture book, but this time we're looking at actual artworks. Now, I, I am in love with all of these artworks. I'm in love with a lot of South African art, artists' works because they are, they have so much narrative, in it, so much content, so much to tell. There are so many stories to be told by these works because they have such a rich, there's a rich history behind it. So the first artwork um, that you see on the left-hand side is an artwork with a little boy drinking it from the tap. Um, that one is called Safe Water. Now, if you look at the picture clearly, you'll see it says Save Water in the background. So there's a bit of play on words there. But the artwork is called Safe Water. And it's called Safe Water because, and now this is where, if you're dealing with older kids, you can actually engage them with, why do you think, the artist has called or named this artwork Safe Water. So we look at subject matter, firstly, and we start unpacking what we see. So we see a boy at a tap in the front of the picture. We see little buildings or shacks or informal dwellings in the background, and they become from larger to smaller into the background. Name the colors of your, talk about the textures on the walls. We need to kind of engage the learner. So you prompt and you prompt all the time as to what more do you see? What, what do you see in the background? Is it night or day? And children start and as they engage with the artwork, they jot these things down. I think one thing I haven't touched on is the mood of a picture. So we can tell now about the, the, the what is happening in the picture, um, like uh, uh, and the story behind it. But we have to also look at the mood of a picture. How does an artwork or pick any picture make you feel? Or what do you think the artist was feeling at the time of, of a, um, creating this picture? Or what do you think the artist wanted to create? What feeling, what mood did the artist want to create? And how does the artist do that? Now, I want to take you to the picture next to that, the one in the middle. And um, this one I use very often in my classroom as well, especially with my grade sevens and my grade nines as well. And you, I get different answers each time. But this one speaks very strongly and very fiercely towards mood and feeling in the artwork. So if you look at this artwork and you ask and you ask the question, what do you think this young man is feeling? Is it a young man? Is it an old man? And very often children will, will grapple with that because they, they will say, I will say, um, tell me more about the artwork. What do you think is happening? And they will identify that it is a young man that is possibly coming from a very poor background. I said, but if you look at his setting, where is where is he at the moment? And they will say it looks like he's sitting in a he's walking in the middle of a of a of a, a, a town, um, possibly in like a CBD, a central business district, wherever he comes from. And very often with my own children, I will say they they will say to me, he's coming probably from a township, and he is going into the city. And he's probably looking for work. And then I will say, now, what do you think he's feeling? What is it? Or, or, what kind of feelings do you get from this picture? And they will say, he looks sad. He looks lost. Um, he looks poor. Uh, he looks hungry. And so, and they'll say, why do you say that? And they will say, because of the expression on his face, because of the clothing that he's wearing, because of the way he's gazing up into the sky, looking lost. So there are all these different things, and you, and that is, and you and you keep prompting and probing them to give you more and more and more and tell you why. And that is how you develop the the, the story behind the picture and what is what the, what is actually happening. Um, so I'd like to go into the next picture just very quickly. Just, not the next slide, sorry, not the next slide. Let's go back again. Just that that slide. This is a very interesting picture for me. The one on the third of May. Um, it's called the 3rd of May, um, done by um, Francesco Goya. 
And I, I use this picture often, I use this artwork often because it speaks largely to, to the, the principles of art of contrast. Um, and it also has a huge story to tell, a lot of history behind it. So, and it also speaks about the opposites, the contrast of, of poor as opposed to, to uh, poverty as opposed to wealth. It speaks about um, light as opposed to dark, which is all about contrast. So you, when you're teaching your visual literacy, you have to be selective with what, which images you select to teach and to use for your children so that they understand first and foremost before they move on to other artworks, which they might not be able to understand initially. You teach them what they should know. So with that particular artwork, I very often use the idea of with the arms spread out, you know, what does it remind you of? And very often children say about Jesus on the cross. So it's about the sacrifice. It's about, um, you know, giving yourself up. And that is what the, the, the children actually, comes from the children, doesn't come from the teacher. It comes from the children. But it's what, what you need to do as a teacher is to push and to probe and to ask, what do you think? What else? Those are the questions. Why do you say this? How does, it, does the artist do? That is what you need to do. So very often when we speak about mood, also we talk about the dark colors. And I'm using a bit of sign language because I've taught their children, so I would have to use dark and light. And I would have you you could use a lot of that kind of terminology um, in the, so the children understand mood as well. Okay. Um, next slide. I'm going through this very fast. Okay. So uh, yeah, I just needed to to uh, click it up. So I did a little bit of a demonstration yesterday. Um, just to, to I actually had a video, but if you can just flick through both both. Um, um, call up the others. Uh, there we go. Okay, so I've got these these two images, and, and I just used two learners just to show you that very often we we need something tangible in the classroom. Children don't necessarily always want to look at a bigger picture, and sometimes we don't have, um, let's say, white boards or smart boards or um, OB projectors. That's what when I grew up, I'm giving away my age now, but we use OB projectors or something like that to be able to show um, the artworks on the on the screen. We, we sometimes have to make something simple as a little flashcard like this, right? And, on, and it's on your screen there. So you, you print out your little pictures, you laminate them, or you don't even have to laminate them if you don't have one. And then you can just use, or you can use books if you don't have um, a pictures uh, or a color printer. And then you hand these out to each child and you basically give them, and you give them a little worksheet, which I've given those children. So you just go through the slides for me quickly. The next slide, please. And both images up. There we go. Okay, so there you can see that I've taken it and I've, I'm prompting the learners as to where to, so they, they're focusing on subject matter, what do they see, and they write it down. Then the next question is to focus and, and to look at content or context rather. What do they think is happening in the picture? And then they need to start looking at the mood, but every aspect of it is written down on a worksheet and I'm going to show you because actually I do have worksheets uh, I've got all of those things and I'd like to make them available to whoever would need it um, so that worksheet that I have there actually has a, a breakdown of looking at subject matter context and all of that can we move on to the next slide please it's just another how to use the flashcards we can move into the next one because this just unpacks the use of um, the flashcards and moving through um, okay so this one over here, I, I just highlight once again the elements of art, and I ask them to start looking for the elements of art in the work. And, and the slide on the right-hand side of the of the screen, um, you will see it says the integration, uh, sorry, information of the artwork. And what I do is at the back of each artwork, so this is the artwork, but at the back of each artwork, I actually place, and you can see this on my, um, I actually place the information of the artwork. And the information of the artwork is basically the empirical data. And I, I often uh, guide them by saying, what is data? What is data? Data or data, as you call it, is information. And so that data of the artwork I place in that particular, um, on the back of that, which is the name of the artist, the name of the artwork, um, the, the, the year the artwork was made, maybe the medium of the artwork. And medium, unpack medium. What is medium? Medium is maybe the, the paint oil on canvas, whether it is um, clay, whether it is whatever the artist is using to create the artwork. Next slide, please. <laughs> okay, so these are just examples of um, the, the, uh, the type of, of um, worksheets that you can use in the classroom for children to be able to unpack and understand um, reading an artwork and understanding visual literacy. 
So exactly what I just did with you now, just in this particular format, it gives you a lovely understanding of, of how to unpack and how the child can record that information. Next slide, please. Okay, those, those are just images of the flashcards. We can move on to the next slide. We can move on to the next slide. Okay, so that, just what I explained now about the information of the artwork, um, you'll see that there is a little um, arrow pointing to that information, and that is what it is. Information of the artwork is the empirical data of the artwork. And you will have the image, and when you're discussing it, it's best to actually use that um, the image and then the information, because a lot of times the information of the artwork tells you a little bit more about the artwork itself. It tells you, gives you an idea of the content or the even the context where, why the artist has created that artwork. And even the date will tell you something about which time period um, and, and will, will can lend itself to telling you more about the context of the artwork. I'm kind of not, not seeing the, the, the questions on the side here. Um, Okay, next slide, please. All right, so that is just a clearer view of um, a, a one of the artwork analysis worksheets that are usually used for my grade sevens or my grade nines. Um, and, and yeah, you could use smaller, I mean, sort of easier images um, for your lower grades. Can we go to the next slide? I think this is the last one now. Okay, so what I've done is I, I will look at some of the questions now and I see that they, um, I've got my contact details on the, on the screen right now. And I'd like for you to um, please use them if you need to. That is our school's Facebook page, um, the HTTP that you see there on our website. So if you have any questions that you'd like to pose me or even the staff here, we are more than willing to assist you. And I'd like to just ask this, answer this one question that's on the, it says, are strategies made more complicated by lack of funds? I'm thinking that schools with more equipment are better able to present. Um, I, I said this earlier, um, some, very often we, we, we struggle with, um, I teach in, a, in, a, in, a, in an environment where our children come from very impoverished backgrounds. Our school um, literally is still a, a prefab building. So we don't have the resources. We don't, we, I like back to basics. I like to go right down to the flashcards. That is why I have them here. We use flashcards. We have um, little printouts of pictures. We use books. We use the worksheets. We use a lot of different things, and and having taught with deaf children also, very often you 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 need these things. And even if you're writing it on ordinary white paper, with a and get the children to write on that paper as well. Um, sometimes we lack of funds. Yes, is a huge problem. It is, but it cannot be the barrier that that prevents us from actually engaging learners with art. Sometimes you don't have to take them to the gallery. You can set up your own gallery but with the children's artwork in your classroom and have them engage with the other, the children's work. So, yeah, I'm not sure if there are any more questions. Um, Bernice, thank you so much. Um, your your presentation was outstanding, and I, just, I want to compliment you on your timing because, wow, you, you finished spot on. Um, all the contact <laughs> details are in the chat, and um, I just want to let you know that you had over 170 people um, engaging with you um, while you were on this. Oh, while you were so, yeah, really insightful. Um, please go back and have a look at the comments because there are lots there. And, and then I also want to um, encourage everybody to please go and um, contact um, Berenice. Her contact details are there as well, so you can also engage with her. And, yeah, thank you so much. It was really insightful. And, and stay warm. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me and for, for, for providing me with this opportunity. I really appreciate it. Yeah, we're so grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Have the, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye. Thank you, I will. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Um, okay, everybody Bye. else, um, you can go back to the agenda and um, and get ready for the next um, three exciting workshops. We're really looking forward to that. Um, so if you want to pop over there now and um, also remember to engage um, on social media. There are lots of prizes to be won. Uh, remember to use the hashtag, um, hashtag CAC2021. Um, enjoy. And